Oh yeah, it's Monday and it's that time for another live show. I'm Andre and this is TFL's What Car or Truck Should I Buy? That's right, guys. We're coming to you live from Thornton and Denver, Colorado. Yep. And it's uh, Nathan and I, and we're answering your questions. And today we're taking, uh, obviously, your questions from the chat room. Uh, and we have a couple prepared questions and a surprise. Yeah, Andre's been holding on to that envelope for a little while. He's very excited about it. Yeah, so, dude, should we hit it off with the first question? Yeah, you want to start with the forerunner question? Yeah. All right. Um, now, now, guys, as you know, the Toyota forerunner is one of the most popular off-road vehicles out there. It's also potentially one of the most capable, and it's still a bit of a bargain if you get the base model one. So we had somebody who was interested in it, but with a difference. And let me read the email. I'm going to read it from my phone because if I do it on my computer, everything gets screwed up. Um, okay, and this comes from Ruben. Uh, first of all, I hope you're all doing well despite the coronavirus affecting everybody. I'm trying to buy a Toyota 4Runner. I want to off-road. I want the off-road option because the rear locker and the goodies, but I'm heading to the limited due to the third row seating option because of my little monkey boy and my two beautiful girls. So that option is great. However, the limited comes with a center diff. I would like to go off-roading uh, or overlanding with the family. Nothing crazy, but I'd like to go out there and camp. Is the rear uh, or center better? Thank you in advance for your help. And once again, this is from Ruben. Um, so, so, so I guess he just want, he's wondering what's the best forerunner for him, right? Right. And so, um, Ruben, I, I have a suggestion. Both of those are, are obviously not what you're looking for. <laughs> This is what um, I did a little bit of research and the limited is not the only forerunner available with a third row seat. You can also get the base model SR5 with the third row seat and it has the same basic four wheel drive system. The thing is, is that the locking rear diff is really good for people who are seriously going to go off road. It is huge. It's also great in snow, by the way, for those of you who deal with deep snow and you have to fire something up to lock the rear end to get out. Um, so for serious off-roading, yes, a locking rear diff is great. Locking center diff is more than adequate for light off-roading for, I would say, 90% of the people who are out there. Um, it's just an easier system to work with. You don't have as much to deal with, and you will get your third row seat with the SR5. And here's why I recommend the SR5, aside from the fact that you'll save thousands of dollars. The SR5 has 17-inch wheels. But the Limited, I believe, comes with 20s. Now, if you're going to go off-road, the one thing you don't want are giant wheels. Right. Having a smaller wheel diameter with bigger rubber means that you have more sidewall that you can let air out and whatnot. It's just a better choice. Also, if you want to go aftermarket tires, which will really help you off-roading, 17-inch are definitely the way to go. So you'll save money. You'll still get your third-row seat and you'll still have a competent off-road vehicle. So that is our recommendation. I know Andre agrees with me on this one. Well, I was just gonna say, before we kind of address some of the chat room comments, right? And guys, keep going with your conversation, discussion questions in the chat room as well. We always love to see that. Um, mm -hmm. I just, I'm not a limited forerunner type of guy. You know, uh, you and I were in Chicago this year, right? Right. In February at the Chicago Auto Show, and we saw those special package. Remember those night editions? Right. And they based them on the limited versions, right? Which means, you know, it had those kind of fancier grills, blacked out, and big wheels, like you said, blacked out. And, and even in black, that's kind of not my cup of tea, you know? It's and, and, and like you said, colors. you know what I mean? And, and then the bigger wheels, Aside from taking your off-road capability down a notch, which it will, they're heavier. So you have greater uh, resistance and more drain on your power. I mean, it's not a significant amount, but it is a little bit. And plus, you know, it's just one of those things where if you're towing or hauling or whatever, bigger wheels do affect the vehicle. So in terms of practicality, that's where Andre and I come from. 
but it's also a question of, you know, the packages. The limited is really something that's a little bit more luxurious. It gives you more goodies and more toys. Nice leather interior. seats. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. And and also, so your sidewall gets lower, right? Because your your wheel size is larger, and then the exactly. sidewall of your tire is smaller. You know, you can't quite you know air down if you need to. You know, all that stuff comes into play. Uh, but but then I wanted to make one comment about the third row, right? The forerunner does offer it in certain trims, like you said, right? Right. But it's a pretty small third row. Uh, so if you do have a little monkey, like you said. <laughs> your little monkey might fit back there but a big monkey probably won't so like monkeys like us that's what i'm saying yeah monkey boys and it's funny because andre and i both have a monkey boy so we totally understand yes i mean you know throwing some sprightly little boy back there and you know bouncing around and strapping him down and put him into the third row totally cool um but yeah you know andre is correct on that uh, it's not a very big third row um, and then the question is, if, if you really don't need it for very long, the third row, you might be able to get that really cool parcel shelf that pulls out, which is available mm -hmm. in the other versions of the uh, Forerunner. There are some other options out there. So if you desperately, if you really don't need a third row, I rarely recommend it. But if you think in the back of your mind, yeah, I'm going to need it from time to time, obviously, that's the way to go. Yeah, uh, for example, in the comment section, Ryan Martinich says the best forerunner is actually a Lexus GX 460. Uh, <laughs> actually, that's that's a pretty fair comment. I mean, the GX 460 is not a forerunner truly, right? The Lexus is more of a Land Cruiser Prado from the overseas markets, you know. But they are, I mean, they are kind of related. In right. Some they ways. have some components that cross over, but they're different engine transmission setups. They're, they're different. Yeah, so if you if you did want a V8 in your Forerunner, you may have to go Lexus. But yep. once again, uh, Roman and Tommy did a video just a couple days ago, right? Uh, they took a new Lexus GX off-road, and you know it's capable, but the clearances are not there. Um, and I think the Forerunner is much better for that. It the Forerunner has a much better approach, you know, departure, maybe even a breakover angle. Oh, that's another thing to keep in mind on the. Um the non-off-road version of the Forerunner, you do have a little bit of a chin spoiler that comes down a little bit, and that will take away from your approach angle. So once again, if you're serious about off-roading, then just go for the off-road package and deal with the fact that you're going to lose that third row seat. Um, but if you're, if you're going to do light off-roading, some basic camping, just do some dirt roads and some minor overlanding, you really don't need to have a rear locker. So you know, that, that's where you have to put your choices. But we're throwing that out there. SR5, probably a better choice. Yeah, I agree. Um, there are a couple of other comments. Um, let's see. Uh, Dan Atkinson says, uh, limited forerunner is a fancy runner. Yeah, I would agree. It's a little bit too much chrome in general. Just, yeah, but you know, Dan, you are such a fancy man. I've seen yes. you with that tuxedo on. He drives a, he drives a semi truck wearing a tux. I've never seen anything like it before. Crazy. Wow. You, you heard it here first. Uh, also, we have Ron Smith, Gordon Gaming, Chainbound, Jacob Steele, Garrett Gilbert, Alex K, DJ Underwood. Uh, thank you guys for joining. I mean, this is, this is really good stuff. Um, I think the other comment I saw was, um, for example, from the 2020 Titan Truck of the Year, um, Forerunner, uh, the best Forerunner per dollar is a TRD off-road premium. So what, what, do, what do you think about this, Nathan, the, the off-road version? Well, I mean, I don't really see why the premium, well, I guess you, well, you get the better package with the premium, well, obviously. So you just... also get different suspension options, right? I mean, um, do you really need the fancy KDSS suspension in, in theory? Yeah, uh, I, yeah, honestly, I don't think you need the A-Track or the crawl system either, uh, honestly. Um, look, it, I, I'm not the right person to ask about this because I, I've actually priced for myself a brand new uh, Forerunner because I was thinking about it. And I just looked at the off-road, the basic off-road package. That was more than adequate for what I was looking for. This mm -hmm. is a little while ago. But once you move up, I mean, 
the, the, the price disparity between the regular one and the premium and then going off to the TRD pros and whatnot, it's immense. And that's just the one thing I can't quite abide. A three or $4,000 difference, I'm sorry, but just for a couple of goodies, I'd rather go aftermarket with some of the stuff that I'd want to do. That's just me. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Agreed. Uh, before we move on with more Forerunner based uh, discussion, I want to bring up a second question. Yeah, read that letter. This is really cool, guys. So I got a letter, a uh, handwritten letter, and it's from Jacob Black. And um, I, I couldn't quite tell the return address at first. And I was looking at it and I was scratching my head. And then I read his letter, uh, which is right here. And it's, uh, you know, really well, you know, uh, uh, first of all, I haven't ever seen a written letter in like 10 years. <laughs> yeah, we don't get many written letters other than bills at TFL. Yeah. So, uh, and then I realized that this letter took over um, almost a month to arrive. And I started wondering, you know, how, what's going on here? And then I figured out that, <laughs> that Jacob Black, he's deployed to Kuwait and he represents our country there. So thank you for your service. Thanks, to man. This country, Jacob, or Jake, actually. And uh, he's writing a letter from Kuwait. It's pretty cool. His question is, he is more curious about used trucks towing. So he says, you know, you do a lot of brand new trucks testing, but I just recently watched your 2014 Chevy Silverado 1500 towing review um, on the iGauntlet. And I'm curious about how an older truck, maybe like a 2013 model, would do on the iGauntlet with a couple of uh, modifications, like uh, maybe uh, helper springs, uh, tuned uh, a tuner, so basically, you know, more power, um, and maybe some other additions, maybe some more drastic additions, like a turbocharger on a V8. Uh, and he says, you know, would you consider doing more of these type of tests? where we test modified trucks, but also old trucks. We've uh, done a few modified trucks. Yeah, you and I, we did a GMC, remember? <laughs> yes, we did. So uh, we were towing like bros. We were towing like bros. Uh, yeah, I remember that one. Um, I do remember that, uh, well, Five Star had a couple things go up the hill. So we've had a few things that have been modified. Yeah. Um, in terms of older used trucks, taking those up the hill, um, unfortunately, I don't think that's something that we can really do, but here's the good news about it. We've been doing this now, the Ike Gauntlet for about uh, six years, right? Yep. All right, so we can s go back six years and you can take the information from the 2014 trucks and you can dial it back a little bit and see what, you know, you know some of the packaging is the same as it was even a few years prior to that. So that's good news. In terms of uh, augmentation, now we've discussed it before. Mr. Truck is also a really good person to bounce this off of, and hopefully we'll be talking to him this uh, Friday. Yeah. The the idea of helper springs, turbochargers, or air springs, um, extra sway bars, all of the things that you can do to help are all good. However, they won't necessarily make your truck safer uh, to tow heavier loads. They may make it a little bit easier to drive, or but maybe the one more thing, comfortable, yeah. More comfortable, yeah. But if your vehicle has a certain load rating, if it is, you know, rated at a certain amount, everything in the world that you do to it may help it perform, make it more comfortable. But it may not actually enhance the safety of the vehicle, and that's one of the things we really do try to push here: is having a safe vehicle, one that tracks properly, that can tow properly, not too much squat, the brakes are working. You have to keep all of these things in mind if you're going to modify a truck. Yeah, I agree. And uh, the only way, the only other way we can do modified trucks and maybe older trucks is if we purchase them ourselves. Right. So um, we don't have kind of liability issues using somebody else's truck, maybe an owner's truck. That's not, we, we can't really do that. But we do buy trucks from time to time. Uh, we have three new ones right now. But we also have a couple of old ones. So as long as we can do it safely, we'll be doing a little bit more of that. And I'm sure Five Star Tuning, you know, our partner uh, with, with the tuners, I mean, we'll have more trucks coming this year. So definitely oh, stay tuned for that. And thank you for writing the letter, Jake. This is really great. And um, 
I also obviously replied to you on email, so I really appreciate that. Uh, Dan Atkinson says, Nathan, that the uh, GMC bro truck was perfect for you. Yeah, he could clearly see me squirming when we had to wear the hats that, that, that covered our ears. Yeah, and, and also uh, the flat bill, right? Flat bill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were trying to find a pair of white sunglasses to wear and constantly calling each other bro while we uh, did it. Yeah. You know, the good news is um, actually with that truck, I got to learn a lot. I always wondered what it was like to drive a vehicle that had giant wheels with really, really thin, thin rubber because it's really popular. People like the look. And I don't mind the look of it, but, but I can tell you, boy, does it just take away from the truck's ability to drive like a normal truck. Um, it's just something that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, we have a donation. Thank you, Gordon Gaming. Uh, $2 donation. Uh, you, you always support us. I appreciate that. Your question is, when is the next uh, Love My Ride EcoBoost high mileage video? So we received a lot of uh, at home editions. So basically what we put out the call to you guys asking for uh, interesting trucks, high mileage trucks, modified trucks, or even cars, uh, for sure, SUVs. Um, and you've sent it to us. We have, what, about 400 submissions. We Eric, we'll get to your question in a second. Um, and um, we're focusing on different brands. So we did the Ford stuff a couple of weeks ago. Um, now we just did, this weekend we did Toyota. So coming up next, we're doing General Motors trucks. Uh, we'll hit some Rams and Dodges, and then maybe circle back. So we're not doing another Ford one for a while, but we are doing more classics videos. Um, Case and Tommy are doing uh, more of a classic Mercedes and also a DeLorean. So, so, so we're going to go back to the future pretty soon. We're not uh, buying it, by the way. We're not buying the goddamn car. I, I just look, just so you guys know, I already told Roman, no, we're not buying that car. No DeLorean. OK, uh, Eric Vol Volkley. Thank you, Eric, for $10 donation. That's huge. Thank you very really, much. Really, thank you for your support, as always. Uh, thoughts on a used FJ Cruiser? I think better um, for taller and bigger guys like me, would, you, uh, would be a daily driver for me. Light camping, used for towing maybe a 3,000-pound race car three to four times a year. Any feedback would be great on a used FJ Cruiser. Um, Absolutely love the FJ. That's another one that I actually, I, I priced it against a Toyota Tacoma that I wound up buying years ago. Uh, Andre remembers my Tacoma. He was the one who forced me to put it in the mud the day after I bought it. Um, I didn't force you. I didn't force you. You forced me and my wife got so pissed off when I came home and it was covered in mud. Is so, your wife listening to this? No, never. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, never. <laughs> no, but um, the FJ, there's a lot of positives. First of all, you could get a six-speed manual transmission with it. Um, the four-wheel drive systems were, were excellent. Even on the base model versions of them with the open diffs, they were great off-road, very heavy. Uh, they towed better than the equivalent two-door uh, Jeep Wrangler, but yeah. it's a very short wheelbase and towing over say 1,200, 1,400 pounds, you're gonna find that it's a little bit wobbly. One of the problems is the wheelbase. Um, it can tow, I believe it's it's supposed to tow at least 3,500 pounds and maybe even up to 5,000 with a tow package, but I wouldn't recommend pushing it. Definitely make sure that you are within the tolerances. Also, the manual does not tow as much as the automatic transmission one does. Yeah, and also um, a used FJ Cruiser, at least in Colorado, and I'm not sure exactly where you're at, Eric. Hi, Mula. It's very expensive. Uh, oh, yeah, baby. I've seen awesome. ones at 30,000, uh, kind of low mileage examples. I've seen some a little bit lower, some a little bit higher. Uh, they're very expensive because now, they're now desirable uh, because it was kind of a concept vehicle that was kind of shifted to production and it just went live and it, everybody, well, not many people bought them necessarily when they were produced, but when they stopped production, boom, it became really desirable. So it's very hard to find a nice one. A lot of them are modified, actually. A lot of them I see here in Colorado have a lift on it, bigger tires, something else, something else going on. So that's really hard. But if you can find a nice one, I think uh, it would be good. There are a couple of quick things. Uh, yes, tall drivers can handle it. It's actually fairly comfortable up front. 
but the back seats are not very comfortable. It has a clamshell design door, right? So when you put people in the back, it has, it's fairly tight. Think of a Honda Element, but with even less space. Also rear visibility, not so great. These are just the negatives. You look over your shoulder, the, the A pillar is massive, or sorry, the A, B, the, the C pillar is huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then over the rear, because of the rear tire, you have a very, very small area to see out of as well. Those are negatives. The positives, three windshield wipers, baby, three, which is so freaking cool. Uh, what Off-road ability, out, the visibility out front isn't too bad. Kind of like a Hummer, actually. That's probably why Andre likes it. But yeah. also, aftermarket accessories are huge. They do tons of things with those trucks, and they are known to be super, super hardy and reliable. Yeah, and I've seen them. Uh, there are people like that go crazy modifying them, taking it to the Rubicon Trail, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Dub MM is asking in the chat room, uh, thank you for creating the channel. Um, you, you're welcome, of course. Um, do you think the Forerunners are overpriced based on their low gas mileage and technology that they offer? Not really. Um, I, I think that the top of the line ones are the TRD Pro is way overpriced. But I, I really do think the off-road and the SR5 are, are good deals. Um, they're, it's old technology, but we know it's rock solid, reliable. Um, I'm, I'm actually a little curious to see, very curious to see what Toyota does in the future, because you have such a positive mix. It still sells like hotcakes. Are they going to screw it up with the next generation? Are they going to get rid of it? Or, you know, what are they going to do? I think that they need to keep the recipe simple and keep this vehicle going kind of as is, but with maybe a new transmission. I know that Dan uh, Atkinson mentioned um, putting in like a, a 10 speed or something like that, which I don't think Toyota has yet, but I don't think they're going to do that because we're talking about a really old platform, a really old platform, but it's possible that they may try to make a couple minor changes before they change the whole thing. New maybe a new engine, I don't think they're going to put the Tacoma engine in there for some reason. They just don't want to do it. Uh, CAC, CA Cressida says he thinks they are. Uh, I mean, it can go back and forth. We can speculate until the cows come home. Right. Uh, but we don't have official information quite yet. Uh, all we know is the, the hottest topic is right now is the Tundra, the next generation. And I think the other trucks will follow. So yeah. But Andre, we do have that leak, which is posted on TFL Truck, which does talk about the new um, TNGAF platform, I think they called it, mm -hmm. underpinning everything, including the Forerunner, yes. and all of them sharing a lot of the same bits in order to maintain lower costs. And that would include the possibility of the turbocharged V6 and the new transmission and some other stuff. Now, once again, this isn't confirmed, but this is based on a leak that we got from a source that we did post on tfltruck.com. Yeah, absolutely. There are a couple of other questions here. Um, what's your favorite truck, TFL? Actually, uh, that's Garrett uh, Gilbert asking. Um, actually, we're, we're, we're doing a, a fun video series starting this Sunday. Um, and it's not our opinion. It's actually going to be your guys' opinion. So uh, we call it Truck Madness. So it's coming. Stay tuned. Um, and we have a fun promo uh, lining up uh, later this week. So, so keep watching uh, TFL Studios. It's five channels, actually. TFL Car, TFL Truck, TFL Now, this channel, TFL Classics, and of course, TFL Off-Road. So we're going to be, we're trying to kind of, you know, let people know about everything we're doing because we have five channels. Yep, about four too many. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know, Nathan, uh, coming up soon, I, I think um, we're going to do TFL Gardening, um, also TFL Fitness. So, yeah, actually, the fitness part might not be a joke, but um, I, I, I keep pushing for TFL Boat or TFL Marine. I think yes. that uh, Captain Andre would definitely make a hell of an appearance. Uh, Admiral. That's Admiral Andre. I'm sorry. Admiral Andre. I, <laughs> I apologize, sir. That's <laughs> um, a couple of things you guys should know. So uh, the uh, truck madness that's coming up. Think of uh, March Madness, what they're doing with the brackets, with the different teams, what, what they would normally do if this craziness wasn't happening right now. That's kind of sort of where we're coming from. So stay tuned for that. And it's interactive, meaning that you guys are directly involved. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. And uh, the favorite truck will percolate, right? It'll kind of come up, right? Right. So 
will do that as well. We also have a lot of fun stuff coming on our channels. We have Loveland Trials on TFL Car coming in a few days uh, in this coming weekend. Uh, this is going to be a RAV4 hybrid versus CRV hybrid. So that's a, a really a lot of crossover fight, the big crossover fight, basically, because they're one of the most popular crossovers out there, period. Yep, um, yep. and two very different uh, philosophies on the hybrid crossover setup. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got, have another $5 donation. Oh, cool. So five bucks from Coco for Kosh. And... Um, Toyota is still uh, revealing the new Land Cruiser this year uh, at the Tokyo show or because the Tokyo show was canceled, are they still re uh, revealing the new Land Cruiser? Uh, so oh, yeah. I, I went on to a couple forums because I was curious about that myself because it's, it is big news. And unfortunately, Toyota, just like everybody else, is behind the ball and they're going to have to be. They're still backed up in terms of press releases, press launches, um, new car launches, uh, factories that are building, everything is way behind. So it's a pretty good guess that it's going to be delayed. Uh, we just don't know how long. Uh, DJ Underwood just donated 25 bucks. Wow, thank, thank you. Thank you, DJ Underwood, that's awesome. Um, DJ's question is, um, any news yet on the 2021 ram heavy duty especially the 2500s uh no not really so we are still planning on testing a 2020 <laughs> we we had it in the in the pipeline in early march and the virus shut down shut it down uh but but yes nathan but we can tell him some information based on once again something that we posted on tfl truck and we actually have on tfltruck.com as well which is the rumor of the three heavy duty um, uh, transmissions that they're talking about. Now we don't have anything confirmed, but Andre, there are three different transmissions they're talking about for possibly 2021 or 2022, am I correct? Yeah, absolutely. And it's basically the current heavy duty setup, especially their high output diesels, right? heavy duty ramps. They're using an um, ISEN transmission, it's a six speed. Now in their Hemis, they're now using this eight-speed ZF. So the rumor is, are they gonna expand their ZF transmission, right? And kind of replace the Ison, or yet again, go with a, um, an Allison transmission. So a lot of people are kind of, when they, their ears perked up when they heard about this, because usually Cummins, Allison, um, they do medium duty trucks, bigger semi trucks together. So uh, a lot of people like that um, combination, especially if it's gonna be the new Allison, um, not the General Motors version of it, which people confuse sometimes because GM is now using 10-speed Allison branded transmissions. Branded. Which, yeah, and the branded thing means that basically GM had the designs for it, then they built the prototypes, they gave it to Allison, Allison looked at all of it, tested the transmission, signed off on all the tests, did all this stuff, and Allison put their name on it. So, uh, but they're working on something else, a nine speed as well. So we don't know yet what's coming. All I'm trying to get to is, I really hope the TRX comes. <laughs> and after the TRX comes, you know, if we can get an updated heavy duty, uh, so be it. Um, uh, I would love that as well. We have another $5 donation from Marlon Hester. Thank you, Marlon. Uh, Marlon says, love your videos. You're most welcome. Marlon, thank you very much. Uh, so there, there are a couple of other questions um, that have to do with the Land Cruiser, first of all. Uh, once again, we don't know much about its future for sure. What I did hear about the Land Cruiser is that the, it's huge in Australia and other markets, first of all. And I heard, we hear rumors from down under, basically. <laughs> when we talk about Land Cruisers, uh, the rumors come from down there because they're kind of hearing about it first because they're the most, kind of the, one of the biggest markets uh, for some of those vehicles. And we heard twin turbo V6, we heard updates, heavy updates. So, but we don't know, we don't, we don't know exactly. 
The Australians also said that they that they hear and it's been leaked. This is what they say that Toyota is going to actually drop the market down instead of going up market even further, that they want to make the vehicle more accessible to more people throughout the world and make it a less expensive vehicle that's more dedicated for off-roading. Now, this is what they say. There's nothing confirmed from Toyota. Mm -hmm. But it would make sense considering that there, as the price went up, the sales dropped off more and more and more progressively. And we're talking over $80,000 right now. So will they drop it down and make it a much more accessible vehicle for everybody else, yet still be super off-road capable? That's what we're waiting to hear. Yeah, CA Cressida says, I should bring my international Lone Star truck to Colorado so Andre can review it. 13-speed manual. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, so guys, as soon as we hear anything official about like the Land Cruiser, any other trucks, you're going to hear it right here. Um, it's not going to be hidden. Um, I, I like another question. Oh. Well, first of all, comment. Scott C says um, he we need to create TFL beer channel uh, <laughs> yeah. and cigars. As much as I would love that, I don't think that's in the cards. Uh, we can't really tr cross beer and trucks. It's not going to work. I mean, from the review standpoint, anyway. It, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, it's getting loaded and, and uh, talking about vehicles. It's just, it doesn't quite work out. But I, I agree with you, it would be awesome. It's maybe like TFL After Dark, you know, that's <laughs> something else. That, that's yeah. a whole other. Uh, like a but there's another comment that there should be just TFL Live Channel and TFL Automotive, only two. Uh, you know what? We, we tried this, but I think people really like specializing, especially you know, if you focus on trucks or maybe just specific off-road machines, uh, a lot of people appreciate that. So, so yeah, I think- There's an interesting thing. Um, I, I know a lot of people do get a little confused with all the channels we have, but you also have to remember that we do produce a lot of content. Now, if we were to take one or two channels and throw all the content we're currently putting out there in the ether on top of each other, you would have five or six submissions on each channel possibly per day. Now. Uh, we've noticed and we, you know, we have to read the tea leaves that people don't necessarily click on all those different ones coming from the same channel all the time. So if we have specialized channels like truck, like car, which are different, and they actually do have different audiences too. There's a lot of crossover, but there's also a lot of people who are dedicated, people who like, you know, a Honda CRV or a Honda Civic are not going to be into a Ford F-150. So we noticed that. And then suddenly we also noticed that a lot of people who are just like side-by-sides, off-road vehicles. So the more we started exploring this and realizing we have talent that we can actually put out there to cover those channels, the more we realized we need more channels for this content. That's, it's just, we can't stack them up on top of each other day by day. And the ultimate goal is to take over the world, right, Nathan? Oh yeah. World domination is absolutely what we're about. Yeah. Especially, you know, if we, if we ever had the resources to do like TFL boat, it probably won't be a Colorado based channel. It probably <laughs> will have to be. We have two lakes that we could use, which are within driving distance and that would be it. So yeah. And, that and they're cool. frozen for six months out of the year. Yes. Yeah, yeah we'd have um, to call somebody up in California or Florida to really help us out. Yeah, totally. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's all goodness. Um, <laughs> uh, a lot of discussion going on. Can, can you see some of the comments too, Nathan? No, I'm having a really hard time reading my phone today, but I did want to bring up a couple of things that were thrown at me through Twitter. Now we have a few, several different Twitter accounts, uh, including my own, which is Nathan Adlin at Twitter, but we have TFL Car, TFL Truck, and TFL Off-Road. All three have their own Twitter accounts. Um, somebody was talking about some of the stuff that's recently been coming out on TFL Off-Road. Um, because we do have its own, it's its own website as well. And TFL Off-Road has a couple stories per week minimum. Um, and recently I've been catching up with a lot of weird kind of forgotten uh, four by fours that were available in the United States that are gone, but that are really cheap to buy. Things like the Daihatsu Rocky, the, um, the what is it, the Sportage, the Kia Sportage first generation, uh -huh. they actually had a convertible version of that, which is a unicorn, really hard to find. There's a whole bunch of ones out there. And so they're popping out periodically on TFL off-road. So people are asking about that. So 
go ahead and read them. They're kind of fun. Yeah, and Stephen has a lot brewing this week. Um, tomorrow, uh, there is a Roof Nest review, um, which is actually based here in Colorado. We did a review over here of the new rooftop tent. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, and Stephen is reviewing the Kawasaki KRX, right. which is one of the most loaded, loaded and optioned side by sides that he's ever reviewed. So ridiculously expensive. Yeah. So he's done like a affordable last week. He did a little Polaris Ranger, and now he's switched to the other end of the spectrum. He's doing a high optioned KRX, uh, which is going to be pretty cool. I'm really excited for that. Um, we also have a lot of kind of at home edition videos as well coming. Um, so yeah, we're, we're trying to do as much as possible, even though most of us are working remotely still. Um, I'm actually locked in my office in the headquarters right now. Um, this is my first day here, like a, over a week. So um, so yeah, we're trying. Got um, anything else for us? Uh, yeah, there's somebody who says that TFL hoverboard should definitely be started. Um, TFL Classics already exists. Yeah, so we were focused on classic uh, automobiles there. Yeah, no, TFL, no TFL locomotive um, or submarine. No, no not, not quite yet. Um, now think about TFL Classic. It's actually been around for a little while. And what we did was we worked it and there wasn't a lot of viewership. So we kind of let it sit for a while while we focused on other things. And then Tommy took it over and he has been doing a fabulous job with taking lots of content and putting it on there. And that's including Dude, I Love or Hate My Ride. He's brought a few episodes on there. And there's some epic vehicles on there, including a Jeep Gladiator, first generation technically. Um, that is just extraordinary. But the thing is about that channel is that it really does cover everything that we don't normally cover. So it's the old stuff, the cool stuff. So I do recommend that channel. It's really good. I, I agree. I couldn't agree more. Todd, so three more questions at least, Nathan. Okay. So first of all, really quick, Todd is asking, will you be able to post every user video submission to at home edition? The answer is probably no. No. Um, and, and the real reason is that some of the videos, there is some issue with the quality of the video, either um, you know, shakiness or sound or wind or something else happened. And if, <laughs> And we don't have a lot of time either. I mean, we're trying to produce our own fresh content as well uh, while all of this is happening. So it's unlikely that we'll publish every single video that, that was submitted. But what we will do is, you know, we look at all of it. We, we're not skimping on anything. And actually, as we do those videos for General Motors and Ram and Ford and Nissan and Toyota, we'll be looking at all data. So we'll be telling you guys what we're seeing. Um, two big questions, Nathan. Uh, yeah. First one, let's hit this one. As far as Jeep is concerned, what's what are your what's what's your favorite, a Cherokee Trailhawk or a Grand Cherokee Trailhawk? That's tough. Um, I think the Cherokee Trailhawk slightly above the Grand Cherokee Trailhawk. My reasoning is. I like the Cherokee for a daily driver as, as a dad with kids. It'd be something that I would be comfortable with my teenager driving. The Grand Cherokee, it's a little bit older. The bones are a little bit older. It's a little bit more of a serious vehicle. It's also a little more of an expensive vehicle. Uh, if you look at the two Trailhawk editions, there's a major disparity in price. Um, but in terms of capability, I'm really impressed with the Cherokee Trailhawk in terms of its overall capability. I've driven them in Mohawk, Mohawk, Moab several times. Um, I've driven them on Pismo Beach. I've driven them in the Rubicon. And they just are animals, especially for crossovers. So really, really good one. That would be my choice, slightly above the Grand Cherokee. I'm sorry to say I haven't driven the Grand Cherokee Trailhawk. I missed out on that, but the Cherokee Trailhawk is a, is a solid vehicle. Uh, we reviewed it several times. Um, I'm kind of a, I like the size of a Grand Cherokee better. You know, it's a little bit more spacious. Um, so I'm kind of leaning, you know, if, if I had to choose maybe a Grand Cherokee, which is being redesigned by the way. Oh yeah. Grand Cherokee is very long in the tooth, but it's very popular. People are still buying hundreds and thousands of them every single month. 
You know what's crazy is that the, the, the platform on that thing is based on the original ML platform that Mercedes-Benz was using mm -hmm. years ago. And it's they still, they stretched it out and stretched it out and my God. So yeah, finally they're gonna get rid of it and replace that platform. And then there, I wanna touch this question from Ulysses Cortez, who basically says FX4 Ford or Chevy Z71. So basically he's asking which off-road package is better Oh, FX4. I'm sorry. Um, so especially, so I'm going to second that, Nathan, but especially the new Ranger FX4. Um, so if you look at what F-150 FX4s were kind of in the past, um, they were very affordable, but you didn't get a heck of a lot. You know, you got, I believe, a rear locker and maybe a different tire, but the tire wasn't very aggressive. Um, and maybe you got different shock tuning. Um, but now... If you look at what Ford is doing more recently, uh, the Ranger came out with a brand new front end. FX4 gets you a skid plate in the front. It looks totally different from a regular Ranger. Um, you get specially tuned shocks and a couple of other items and then trail control um, you know, for slow speed crawling. Which works uh, in reverse. Yes, also works in reverse. And it's fairly smooth in most occasions. <laughs> I've tried it several times. Um, and then Z71, um, I think is kind of where Ford was. So Z71 is more mild in my opinion. You know, you do get, uh, you know, a shock upgrade, a small upgrade in the shocks and different tires, but you're not getting any lift. Trail Boss gives you lift, right? But not a Z71. And you don't get a lot of special looks. You know, you get a badge basically. You don't get like a big, uh, skip plate in the front that's hanging out there. Um, well, and so, and, and then the biggest issue, Andre, I mean, the, the elephant in the room other than me is the G80. That rear end is really good on the street. It's decent for towing and everything else, but off-road, having a locking rear diff really makes a difference. Yeah, and then in the Ford, it's a knob or sometimes it's a button. So um, so yeah, Ford, Ford is doing that with their off-road packages. Uh, but I think Ford still kind of has a disparity between the FX4 and the Raptor. I think there's still a quite a big gap. You see what I'm saying? Oh, well, between, yeah. I mean, the Raptor the has a fully dedicated undercarriage. We're not just talking about suspension. We're talking about A-arms. We're talking about uh, hard points. The underside of a Ford Raptor is as different from a regular F-150 or an FX4 as a Ranger is from an F-150. They're so different underneath, and it's a completely different vehicle. That's why when a lot of people say, well, Ford F-150 Raptor, I, I, I can't even process that. I just say Ford Raptor, because in, unless the Range Raptor comes here, as far as I'm concerned, that is a completely different truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there's a question here. Um, I just lost it. Oh, first of all, there was a question, I think maybe it was Garrett, who said, are you gonna modify your trail boss? Uh, currently, we don't yeah. have any plan. Oh, uh, we got to do it. Huh? Don't be a spoiler. Come on, please. Can we modify it? Uh, you know, I wanted to do a long arm suspension. Like, uh, remember there was news uh, uh, from Pax Power about the Jackal? Yeah. This, this Chevy that was wide and big. and Yeah. And uh, I'm still trying to talk Roman into this, but he's not bending yet. So... Um, Right now, we don't have any plans. Right now, we're putting miles on it. Um, everybody's still kind of happy to drive it. And it's more of a long-term review. You know, we're trying to beat on it and beat on it and see exactly what it's about. It's a really um, good truck so far. I mean, really yeah. impressive. Better than I thought so, it would. So we have over 3,000 miles on it already over a couple of months. And we're going to continue to beat on it and give you kind of a long-term review in a couple of months. So that's coming. Um, Garrett says trail boss or tremor. Boy, that's a tough one um, well, because they're different classes. Yeah, I know. Classes. I mean, it's, right. that's we're talking an F two fifty versus an F or a, you know fifteen hundred, just totally different vehicles. I mean, it, you might as well compare a Ram power wagon to the tremor. That is a much closer, much closer comparison. I think, I mean, the trail bus we have right now, it's a solid truck. It drives well on the road. It drives really well off-road. Uh, Tremor gas version of the Tremor, Super Duty. 
uh, is also a pretty good all around truck. The diesel trimmer, if you're not towing, it's just kind of rough riding because it has a heavier spring. Um, I don't know, it just depends on how heavy you want to tow. They're kind of similar in my, in my book, unless, unless you want to tow over 10,000 pounds, which the tremor will do all day long uh, without an issue. Um, interesting, big green versus big red. What's big red? Is that is that the trail bus? <laughs> it's got to be the trail bus, right? Uh, so big green is in Toronto or in Canada. So to, in, the, in order for us to compare them, uh, although Stephen could do it, Stephen could grab a trail bus up there from a fleet and maybe do a review. Um, okay. I'll make the phone call. Can you call him, please? Yeah, yeah, I'll have him take care of it right away. Um, it, it, unfortunately, the Canadian fleet is a lot thinner than our fleet here. So being able to immediately get one may take some time, but the idea of comparing Big Green, which he just recently updated something too. I think he repaired, was it another starter, like this fifth starter or something? Yeah, uh, it's kind of eating starters right now. Yeah, for some reason, but he's, he's done some great modifications to it. That truck is a beast. So comparing it to a uh, trail bus, I think is a great idea. Uh, there's a question that has to do with kind of the price of expensive trucks. Um, we kind of mentioned the TRX briefly in, in the show, which is the latest, so, you know, this is not official, but the upcoming truck from Ram, right? Um, and like uh, Maya's Dragon says, you know, is there really a market for trucks over $60,000? Because the TRX is not gonna be an, a, a cheap truck. Um, no, not at all. Um, it's going to have, you know, supposed to have a supercharged V8 and special suspension and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, and then this question is kind of echoed by the 2020 Titan truck of the year, uh, who's saying, you know, in this current economy, maybe a small truck, like a mini truck, something like an old S stand would be better. Um, so there's merit on both sides, right? Um, I think if Ram this is not the, probably the best time to launch a TRX <laughs> right now, but I think there's still the pent up demand there. Um, the, the Ram guys or guys who, you know, um, don't want something else rather than the Raptor, right? Will gravitate towards that truck, uh, I think. It's gonna be expensive, but there may be some people who still have the uh, resources to buy them. But what's going on on the other side, dude? <laughs> Well, well, first of all, let, let me go circle back to that. You're, you're, you're on to something there. Roman, believe it or not, actually said this, and he was right. The Raptor and trucks like that sort of represent the new sports cars for America. If you look at sports car sales, they're falling on the toilet, okay? But high-performance off-road trucks have been climbing for years. Uh, the Raptor is, it sort of ushered in this all-new, the Ferrari of off-road truck type mentality. Other trucks are really good as well. But the Raptor really did bring that in. And now you've got the Lamborghini of off-road trucks, basically, this TRX, which supposedly mm -hmm. will be more powerful and possibly as, if not more so, capable. So is there a market for it? Absolutely. Right now, so Ford is still selling a lot of F-150s. Yes, this year will be a rough year for everybody. But in general, these trucks are very popular. They're, I mean, I go out on the streets and I see Raptors all the time running up and down. I see them in Los Angeles, for crying out loud, a place where you really don't need them. But they're very popular, and they will remain to be popular until they are dethroned. And even then, then Ford will go and you know react and build an even better one, which we're expecting anytime soon. The point is, is that right now, yeah, it's a, we're talking $60,000, $80,000 for trucks. People are buying them. There are certain tax incentives and whatnot for buying a really expensive truck for some people. Mm -hmm. Other people just don't mind spending that ridiculous amount of money for a pickup truck. And the bottom line is you are paying for a lot of tech if you think about it. So the idea of buying a really expensive off-road super truck, which is basically what we're talking about, doesn't sh uh, a lot of people are not gonna shy away from it. Yeah, there is another donation from Ronald Strode. So thank you, Ronald. Thanks, Ronald. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Ronald says, love watching you guys from Hawaii. Uh, any update on the Nissan Frontier 2021 model? Any Hello, images? And he said, mahalo. Mahalo. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, Mr. Truck brought this question up a couple of weeks ago. He said, guys, where are those frontier prototypes? You know, if, the, if this truck is coming at the end of this year, which is still kind of the case, uh, why are we not seeing, you know, dozens of these prototypes running around everywhere? Um, and it is a good point. We have seen them a couple of years ago or up to about a year ago. About a year and ago. And there's kind of been a lull, right? I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. I have a guess. Um, yeah. I still think that they are already ready to go with the production line, not just in Smear wherever else they're going to be producing this vehicle, possibly worldwide with a new body and new frame, new platform, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff is ready to go and has been ready to go for a while. What they were trying to do was milk the current generation frontier for as long as they can, which is why we now have the one with the new engine in it, as they transition their plants over to building the new platform. Because remember, we're talking about new stampings, new frames, new jigs that have to hold them. All these things have to be replaced because we are talking about a different size. We don't know what the differences are, but it's supposed to be different. And because of that, it is my guess that they're ready to go, but they're just gonna peter out with the current population of current vehicles before they get to the new ones. Now, because of that, they've been ready to go for over a year. So why bother putting these things out there and test them when they've had test mules out there based on the regular vehicle that we've been driving with the engine transmission setup that they're going to be using. There's no reason that you really need to have the new body out there if you already have the new engine transmission, which is really what you need to be testing. So my point mm -hmm. is that vehicle's already been tested to death. They don't need to spend the money on it. It's already ready to go. They just have to pull the trigger and start the production line and boom, we'll have it. So that's why we're not seeing it. Was that too long of an answer, Andre? Uh, no, no, it's not. Uh, I think uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, it makes a lot of sense what, what you're saying. Um, my other take on it is um, once this most of the lockdowns maybe happen, we might see a couple. Uh, maybe the lockdown also has delayed some final tuning, right? Because they need to do some final touches on this thing um, if it's coming out at the end of the year. So uh, we might see them, but we don't have any information exactly. Uh, some outlets out there are saying that the next frontier will have not very drastic styling change, kind of similar, maybe a little bit more square, but we don't know yet. So we, we, we don't quite know exactly what's going on. Right. Uh, Dan Atkinson said that Big Red is his old Ford. So, so somebody's here talking about old Ford versus old Chevy. So that's going to be a grudge match that may be hard to set up, but would be cool. Uh, well, cool Dan's in what Georgia? Yes. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Distance-wise, about a thousand miles away from Big Green. So yeah, you're going to have to talk to Stephen and see if you guys can hang out at some point in time. Five miles in between. Five hundred miles in between. Ron McKenna is signing off. Ron, thank you for joining this show. Um, yeah, thank all. you. And we're going to have to sign off soon, um, too. Appreciate it. We're kind of reaching the top of the hour, which is kind of where we need to, uh, unfortunately, uh, end the show. But I love this discussion, dude. This, is, this, has, been, this has been pretty uh, amazing. Um, also, I mean, in theory, we still have a lot of new vehicles to get through this year. <laughs> Although we've been delayed. But in theory, we, need to, we, we still have a lot going on uh, with new vehicles coming. If you think about the amount of vehicles that we're supposed to cover already, we're about a half dozen behind, I would say roughly. Mm -hmm. And by the end of this year, if everything keeps going the way it's going, we'll be about 10 to a dozen behind, um, which is a shame, but that's just the way it goes. Yeah. And there is another, maybe a final question here, but uh, Colin uh, Godby is saying, uh, asks, Thanks for everything you all do. I've been looking for a 2004 Sequoia that's one owner, or he found one that's one owner with 180,000 miles for about 4,000 bucks. It has a lot of maintenance already done on it. Should I stay away? Dude, this is the perfect question. <laughs> that's a really good question. You know um, why? Because we just did a reliable Toyota video. 
Um, we just did it on truck um, just this weekend, and Sequoia was part of it. Right, so there, was tund that, there was the Tundra, the Sequoia, and also the Tacoma that was featured, right? Yeah, and the Sequoia, I think the only thing you really need to pay attention there is with an older Sequoia is look at the timing, ch timing chain. Just make sure that was taken care of uh, because you know if it's not, that's gonna be a cost uh, that you're gonna have to uh, deal with. But that 4.7 liter, according to the owners that we saw up there on the video, uh, the 4.7 is still solid. I mean, we knew that going in there, but they just reinforced basically that the engine is really solid. Yeah, three of the vehicles that were in that video that you put together um, had the 4.7. The two yeah, I did. Sequoia. Um, and it, the, the only issue that the Sequoia that the owner submitted it from Oregon, the only issue that, and that truck had 284,000 miles, I believe, uh, was uh, there was one instance where the fan blade on the radiator fan snapped, went through the radiator and punctured it. Um, that had to be fixed, which is kind of a big deal. But still, other than that, that truck's been solid. So I say go for it if you like it. I would oh, yeah. say go for it. Yeah, it's, I mean, they're solid trucks. They just are. Yeah, so um, I think we I think we're gonna wrap up on this on this uh, item. Okay, guys. So this Friday we have Mr. Truck coming in, so it's gonna be a lively uh, hoedown <laughs> with him. Yep. Uh, it, it's definitely gonna be, but it's gonna be at the same time. So prepare for that and prepare your questions, and don't forget to send us some emails as well, so we can have some pre-prepared questions to push through this thing. Okay. Yeah, and our email is ask at tfltruck.com. And of course, you guys know this, um, you can send your questions there. And also, if you have a clip of your high mileage truck or your high mileage car or whatever it may be, uh, that's really interesting, uh, send it there as well. Yeah, and one final thing. Remember, this becomes a regular video when we're done with it, and we will be looking at it again and answering a few more email questions or online questions. Yeah, and there's also a question here about the Toyota Hilux. Uh, we also did, just did a video on it. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be a story tomorrow, right? Yep. Um, so stay tuned on the Hilux as well. Uh, we have some discussion there as well. Um, so uh, see you later. We're going we're gonna to sign off. Stay safe and sane out there, guys. We'll see you next time. All right. I'm going to close it down. Thank you.